Good evening to you all. You are, um, I welcome you um, once again to our history, uh, our C History TV. Uh, today we are looking at the organization of the uh, transatlantic slave trade. Um, in our previous video, we have looked at the origin of the transatlantic slave trade and we saw that um, Antoine Gonzalez was the first European who was actually credited for the exportation of the first part of black Africans from West Africa to Europe, I mean Lisbon to be precise. And even though uh, Prince Henry aimed to convert these Africans um, into, into Christianity, that actually did not take place because of uh, untimely death. And then Spain, of course, discovered the Americas or the New World, and then the slave trade took off. Today, we are going to specifically look at the organization of this uh, trade. How was this trade organized among the Europeans as well as among the Africans who uh, engaged in this trade. But before we begin with anything, I would like to remind you to subscribe to the channel and also I recommend it, uh, you also recommend it to your friends in other schools. Good, so let's begin with our lesson objective for today. So our lesson objective for today is that by the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe how the transatlantic slave trade was organized. So if you are asked about the organization, describe how the transatlantic slave trade was organized, you should be able to do that at the end of this lesson. Again, you should be able to explain why the transatlantic slave trade was referred to as the triangular trade. So in some books, at a point in time in the trade, it was referred to as the triangular trade. Why that? You should be able to do that for us. So, so let's begin with the first one, organization. So how were all these uh, numerous unfortunate Africans and slaves and pictures? And that is specifically what we are going to look at. So to begin with, I mean anything, the European slave traders, the Europeans who actually got involved in the trade, actually they brought down you know, some items, some commodities like textiles, beads, light metal ornament, copper, iron bars. Sometimes they even import gun and gun powder, alcoholic liquor and knives. And these were the, the commodities that the European slave traders would bring with themselves from Europe to, to, to batter for these human uh, commodities, that's the place. Now, beside these um, commodities that they bring, the two, to exchange for the the human commodities again they also come along with some items like iron shackles as well as fittings and these were meant to chain the slaves to chain them up again they also come with themselves some feeding some food you know uh, for the slaves uh, and then also some you know uh, trips to actually uh, you know punish the stubborn slave. So it is more or less like somebody who is going to trade. You don't go with only your money or your item of exchange, but you also go with other, you know, um, 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 other, other equipment uh, so that we can help you to carry out the trade that you wanted to, to, to do. And that is exactly what these European slave traders, you know, did. They did not only bring with themselves the the items that we're going to batter for the trade but rather they also came with themselves some iron shackles and fitters which will help them to actually clean the place and keep them in order and this is the uh, an image of the iron shackles so you put this on your leg and sometimes put it on your hand good so that is the first thing you should establish let's go on and look at the some of the things that they do. Now, the European slave traders, when they bring these items, what they do is that they establish outposts 
on islands and sometimes on the coastal ports where they will be dealing with the neighboring African merchants and the rulers. So sometimes they build castles along the, the coast, uh, you know, to serve as warehouses for the human commodity and that is place. And also the castles also protect them against attacks. And so that's what they, they, they do. In areas where they don't get access to a seaport or they are not able to build a castle, they, they reside in islands and create an outpost. And these are images of the El Nina castle, as we have seen here, found in Ghana, in modern day Ghana, in West Africa, where a lot of African uh, you know, slaves were actually uh, taken from. And Ghana has about three or four main uh, castles or slave castles spread along um, her coast. And that's the, the, the largest in, in West Africa. So we will come to talk about these uh, pictures later on. So let's move on. So in the interior, the coastal people were the fancy, and these fancy people were the people who lived along the coast. Along the coast, they were the coastmen. They would serve as middlemen in the transaction, you know, between the slave trader and the European slave buyer. Okay, because sometimes the European slave uh, traders, the African slave traders, most of them were not actually good in the English language or in the, in the language of the Europeans at that time. And therefore, it was the these Francis, these group of ethnic groups known as the Francis, they were the ones who were who stayed with the Europeans and therefore they actually understood at the point some of their uh, languages. And so they were the ones who served as middlemen for the trade. Now, the European merchants will remain at, I mean, at the coast and the African agents will then go inland you know, to buy the slaves or to purchase the slaves from the chiefs and the slave was raided. That then means that the chiefs and the slave raiders were the producers in this market chain. The chiefs and the slave traders were the producers. They were the ones who were actually acquiring the slaves from the direct source. The raiders were people who would just go into any society with weapons, seize them, and then go and sell them. Those were the raiders. And that's how these raiders got their men. Good. Now the chiefs on the other hand were not, or even those, I mean some of them were involved in raiding because they had a raiding party, but they actually got a sort of their, you know, slaves from some other sources which we are going to look at. So let's look at the market chain before we come to the ways in which Africans could be enslaved. So the chiefs and the slave raiders were the producers, okay, and then who were the, of course, the retailers and the, and the consumers and co. Okay, so we shall look at that later on. But let's move on. So Africans could be enslaved in four ways. So this were how Africans were to be enslaved. And the first one was that if you were a criminal, you could be sold by a chief as punishment. And this is one way in which the chief got their slaves. People who were, of course, criminals were, were actually sold off. Again, um, free Africans could also be obtained from raiding gangs, and that's what I said that we had raiding gangs, people who raided other towns and, and, and villages for slaves. They come with weapons, just raid the whole or compound and take people and sell them. Again, domestic slaves were also be sold, and that was a companion whereby if you were owing somebody and the person was not able to, to, to pay, he he brings his or her son to stay with you, and at times this son, who was a victim, is then sold to the Europeans. That's what we know, we, we, we call the Panyaran system. And again, the last one was prisoners of war. Whenever there is inter-ethnic war among both the, 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 the African people, among the, the various tribes in, in that country, at the end of the war, they capture some people uh, and, and uh, you know, as prisoners of war and send them uh, and sell them as slaves. So this is the, the dungeon, as we have seen it there. This is the dungeon, and this is where 
because this is where this area here is where the slaves actually exercise if you can see that there's a, a sloppy uh, of course building just beside the castle that's where they exercise all right and this down here as you see the down parts are the dungeon and this is inside the dungeon where the slaves were actually kept in this dungeon that's the down doors the first floor where the dungeon and that's the image you see inside the sun uh, on the, I mean, this is the dungeon, no window, no nothing. Uh, if you close it, it's going to be dark, and the slaves are actually inside. And this was to protect them, as you said, the castle was meant to serve as a warehouse and also protect them. So these are common which were actually protecting the Europeans. But, so let's move on to, well, let's continue. Now let's look at the transportation. So you you can see that the Europeans, or I mean the European slave traders, did not actually go into the interior to to, to to capture the slaves. They were at the castle, and it was the African slave agents, as well as the chiefs and the slave raiders. They were the ones who were doing the capturing of Africans themselves you know and then selling them to the europeans and so there is this argument this running debate that um it was the africans who actually enslaved themselves um, it was not the the europeans who came you know to enslave them but they actually sold themselves or sold their people to the europeans i don't know of course what you think about that uh, debate or argument but that's what some people are saying that Africans sold themselves uh, to the Europeans. That's, of course, a topic for or an argument for another time. Let's look at the transportation. So, I mean, once you were a victim, either being a prisoner of war, either being you were raided, either through pioneering and you had been, of course, resold, these slaves are taken from the interior part. Okay, from the interior part, and they are normally transported under very harsh conditions. Okay, and they were chained and they were also supervised by special overseers. And as you have seen in the image there, this is how they were brought from the interior, and you could walk for days, for months, you know, before you could get to the coast. Right now, the slaves were again forced to, you know, of course, carry other goods that were bought by the agents on their way. And, 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 and those who were, who were, some of them, those who rebelled, were actually flogged or shipped, right? And those who felt sick at times were also left to die because you were chained with your next neighbor. And so if you fall sick, you prevent the whole group from moving. You, you understand? And so that actually also, you know, led to, to, to that people died. And, and then also, a lot of also died of exit. I mean, exhaustion, they were very tired, you know, thirsty, and then, you know, other diseases also struck them on their way to the castle. Uh, so it's more or less like going to the market uh, to buy tomato, you know, and then after coming back and realizing that some of them, you know, have caught spoils, or some of them caught spoils on the way. Of course, you can't get all your commodities intact. So that's exactly the same thing that happened to slaves. No matter the number of slaves you take, you you usually get casualties. Now usually uh, the the slaves would arrive at the coast, you know, looking very dirty because of the lack of maintenance that they did not, you know, that were not taking place because you are walking through the forest to the coast. So very often in Ghana, for instance, they stop at uh, at a point, the last point that they will stop, and this is very close somehow about 50 to 40 kilometers to where they are going. A village called Asin Manso, and in this at this place they take their last bath, which they have a river there called the Slave River or Odonkonsu in their local language. And so they take their last bath, you know, to look good and to freshen up. And at times too, at the at Asin Manso, their their hairs are shaved. Uh, you know, they are they, they are meant to look attractive because they are getting very closer to their destination and that's the castle and this journey from the hinterland to the coast is referred to as the first or initial passage 
and you can be asked in any examination that the journey from the hinterland to the coast is referred to as what? As the first journey or passage. So let's move on. So at the at the at the coast now we've seen them we've come with them through the forest to the coast. Now at the coast buyers or sellers will meet and strike deals you understand so the europeans will examine these leads look at their teeth look at their strength and then the marketing of these <coughs> sorry the marketing of these leads took two forms sometimes a butter system or sometimes a collector with the use of money so either you pay or you you, you exchange uh, the, the items that we earlier on of convention like the 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 mirror you know the alcohol the wine the the you know the gun the gunpowder and all of that so they they better they exchange them now after the europeans have bought the slaves after what happened is that they keep these slaves either in castles under unhygienic of course uh, uh, conditions in areas where they did not have castles like the island there where they set out with on an island they have a special, you know, unhygienic house known as the barracoons, as we have seen in the first image up there, where they will keep the slaves and they will wait for the slave ship to come from abroad, as we have seen the slave ship, and then on the next, uh, under the barracoon, to wait for the slave ship to come from Europe to come and, 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 and transport them. And so in Cape Coast, where they had the castle, uh, like Almina and Co., the slaves were kept in dungeons, as I showed you, in the image earlier on waiting for their, uh, their sleep ship. Now the final stage of the organization uh, it, I mean is now due as they wait in the castle when the ship comes of course they are being taken away packed like sardines into the slave ship as you have seen on the third image from the from up from the third image you see that boats are carrying the slave from the castle to the slave ship you know, which up on the, on the on the sea, and this passage from from the journey from the coast of Africa to the Americas, that's the last passage, is what is termed as a middle passage. So you can also be asked the journey from the coast to through the Atlantic Ocean to the uh, Americas is known as or uh, known as the also the last, it's already the middle was passage, and when you ask, you should be able to do that. Now, crossing of the of the sea, so on the ocean, on the Atlantic Ocean, it will take them 25 to 50 days, you know, like a month or two, depending on the origin, where they were going, the destination and the wind, because at this time, they were not using steamships. The Europeans were using sail ships, which, you know, used the wind to actually sail or to move. And so, the lower the wind, you know, the, 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 the slower the ship moves. Okay, but the higher the wind, we realize that the ship will go faster. That's why we said you it, it also you know has to do with the wind. Then the slaves were kept on deck. They were kept under, as we've seen in the last video, the slaves being kept under the deck. That's under the ship. There is there is a deck. So on deck is at the top of the ship, and under the deck where they were being kept. And the male, of course, they remain shackled, but the women and children were somehow. Free, but not in all instances. Again, <coughs> according to the pictures, they also, of course, carry food. According to the pictures, the number of food that they have, the, the food that they normally eat, or corn and rice, and sometimes yam. And most of these slaves die on the century, you know, because of the unhygienic uh, situations that they found themselves in. Now, on under the under under this deck, you realize that slaves were actually naked under the deck. You know, there were no proper uh, you know, like there were no proper hygiene, you know, in place here. And so the slaves will have to put food, they have to reweave, they have to vomit, they have to do all kinds of things under the deck while they are chained packed on top of the other, you know, under the deck. And occasionally they were brought up on the, uh, on the deck to exercise. That's occasional. You know, somehow, you know, then they'll go back to the deck. And the deck, under the deck was so, so, so dark to the extent that some of the slaves according to records, also arrive in the new world, you know, uh, you know, blind or partially, you know, blind. And that's, that's that uh, the organization of the trade. Good. And I hope you have learned something about the organization of the trade. So let's look at the 
the, the reasons why the slave trade later became known as the trans uh, the triangular trade or the three stages of the uh, slave trade so later as i have said earlier it became as the triangular trade or the great triangle because the trade passed through three continents these three continents were europe america and what africa so this is europe up here this is africa over here and then this is what the americas over here and as you have seen when they bring in the items the europeans will bring in you know uh, items from uh, of course notably from liverpool port in the uk or in great britain they come with them the gunpowder and coal you know the alcohol and, and all of that they bring them from here and then they butter them or they exchange them for slaves from africa yeah and then they transport them to the americas and sell them here so this is the destination this is where the slaves were actually sold america is usa uh for the caribbean brazil and Co. so they sell them here to these people who were here i mean themselves their own countrymen then in order to prevent them going back with an empty ship you understand they then buy other things like sugar, cotton, rum, tobacco, and coal, and send them to Europe you know, to go and resell again. And, and that is what, of course, you know, uh, it's meant to, to be spread out triangle. So you can see it forms that triangle, you know, you know triangular, you know, kind of. And that is why the slave trade was the point referred to as the Great Triangle trade or the triangular trade because passed through three major continents. So, so today has been a very interesting discussion. Try your hands on these uh, questions and uh, if you have anything, any question uh, to ask, you can actually see my contact down there. You can actually do that for me. Good, we shall meet some other side. Bye-bye.